people have known for a long time that socioeconomic status correlates with all sorts of measures of health. In the United States, you look at the 5% wealthiest and the 5% poorest, and there's a 25-year difference in life expectancy. That's a pretty dramatic thing. And you find that basically in every westernized society, not as extreme as in the United States, but it's there. So all along, there was a very simple explanation. Aha, poor people cannot afford to go to the doctor. But it's not that, because you look at countries with universal health care, and there is that same relationship between economic status and health. So you say, oh, okay, poor people are living next door to toxic waste dumps. They're living in dangerous neighborhoods. They don't have the money to go to health clubs. They don't have the money to buy healthy foods. That's it. And you do really careful studies and lifestyle risk factors and protective factors only explain about one third of the variability. And what you see is exactly the studies you alluded to just now, you look at somebody's objective socioeconomic status, and that's a predictor of their health in all sorts of ways. But even better, you ask them about their subjective socioeconomic status. When you compare yourself to other people, how do you feel like you were doing? And somebody's health is better predicted by their subjective sense of their socioeconomic status than their objective. What does this tell us it's not being poor that's bad for your health, it's feeling poor. And what's the easiest way for a society to make you feel poor, to surround you with all the things that you don't have, to show you the inequality in your face every single day out there. All that inequality does is take the people who don't have enough and remind them over and over and over again of that. And what you see is insofar as poverty is a predictor of poor health, it is statistically mediated by subjectively feeling poor, which is statistically mediated by the degree of income inequality surrounding someone. And what you then see is what does a lot of income inequality do? It makes for a society in which people don't trust each other in which people feel like they don't have peers, in which people feel like they have no voice, they have no efficacy. Uh, sociologists have this term social capital, the amount of trust, the amount of emotional reserves that people have in depending on each other. When societies are unequal, social capital goes down the drain, it disappears, and that's the driving force on the poor health. And the best demonstration of that is when you look at what diseases are most sensitive to socioeconomic status, inequality, so on, it's the diseases that are most centrally sensitive to stress. It's the stress-related diseases that get worse in an unequal society. And maybe the last point, at least in the United States, you could go all day long telling people about how unfair this is for the poor, how unfair it is, and the people in charge may or may not care in the slightest. Something that should make everyone, even in the ruling class, sit up is when inequality increases, everybody's health gets worse. The poor's health gets much, much worse the middle class moderately worse, but even the wealthy, their health gets a little bit worse as inequality goes up. Why is that? Because they have to be more and more stressed about trying to keep the outside world away from them. They have to put that much more effort into building walls between them and the outside world, and that's stressful in and of itself. So even if you don't care about the poor, if you only care about the wealthy, Inequality isn't good for the wealthy's health either.